Welcome to our review on instrumental methods of analysis. The first thing we need to know is what on earth we're talking about when we refer to instrumental methods of analysis. And put simply, it's just where we're using a machine to carry out the analysis on a substance. And what we're going to do is have a look at a range of different techniques that we can use to do this. First thing we need to consider then is why we're actually doing this. So what are the advantages of using these instrumental methods of analysis as opposed to carrying out the chemical tests as we've looked at previously? First of all, then we get a high degree of accuracy. Secondly, they're very fast and they can run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're very sensitive. And as a result of that, they can analyze very small amounts of samples. And that's really useful if we're talking about some kind of a sample that's very expensive or difficult to obtain in the first place. So the first one of these instrumental methods we're going to look at is gas chromatography. In school, you've probably done chromatography using a bit of filter paper and putting a mark of a pen on there and then watching the colours run. This time, what we're actually going to do is we're going to change whatever our sample is into a gas and pass it through a bit of machinery in order to identify what we've got. So on the left, I've given you a diagram of the equipment we use. So on the far left, you can see we've got this carrier gas cylinder. So that's going to be the mobile phase, the bit that moves. We inject our sample at the top of the machine there. And what happens is in that oven, we're going to change that into a gas. So the sample's injected, changed into a gas which is carried around using the carrier gas which goes through that column which is packed in with particles of what is our stationary phase as it then comes out the other side it's picked up by the detector depending on the speed at which those particles have moved through the stationary phase is going to determine when they come out the other side and therefore when the detector picks them up the detector is then put onto a computer screen and that's where we see our chromatogram, which is our little graph that shows us what we've got present. So I've given you an example chromatogram on the right there. Next thing we need to understand is how to actually interpret one of these gas chromatograms. So first thing to know is that each of those little peaks you can see labeled A to F on the left there is a substance. The area underneath the peak actually shows us the relative amount of the substance. So the bigger the peak, the more substance we actually had of that type. And the retention time, which is along the bottom there on your X axis, that's different for each substance. And the retention time quite simply is the time it's taken for a substance to travel through the chromatography column. So what we're going to find is that the smaller substances, so those ones that are much smaller molecules and therefore able to get through nice and quickly, their retention time is very low. Whereas the bigger substances, the ones that are going to travel through that column very slowly, they've got the longer retention times. The second technique that we can use is mass spectrometry. Now, the mass spec actually measures the masses of atoms and molecules, as the name really suggests. And what we can do with this is analyze the relative amounts of the different isotopes. And we can also use it to analyze the structure of molecules. So the way in which this works is that a sample will enter the mass spectrometer and be ionized to form things called molecular ions. Now, as these molecular ions gain energy, then it can cause them to fragment, so break into small pieces. Then those ions are going to pass through the machine and a detector is going to record the amount of each fragment that's present. Now what we need to do is understand how to interpret one of these mass spectrums that we will generate on the screen. So what we can see on the right hand side there, I've given you an example mass spectrum that we could generate. First thing is when you're looking there, you can see that the peak on the very far right, so the one furthest along on your mass to recharge ratio scale, that is the molecular ion. Now, molecular ion quite simply is going to be the same as our relative formula mass of the molecule. So if you're looking at the whole molecule, 
the molecular ion peak is it. So when you actually read that, we know that that sample there, for example, has a relative formula mass of looks like about 58. If they give that to you in the exam, the scale will be much clearer so you can actually read off the exact relative formula mass. Then what we find is as you go further towards the left, we get different peaks for the different fragments of the molecule. And the height of the peak tells us the relative amount. So we know that that particular chemical with its relative formula mass of about 58, then that's going to be broken up into these smaller fragments with those masses of around 30 and 40. The last instrumental method analysis we're going to look at is the infrared spectrum. Now, when we produce an infrared spectrum, what we get is a little graph that shows us peaks for the wave numbers which are present within the chemical. And those wave numbers correspond to the types of bond that we have present. So on the right, I've given you the infrared spectrum for bromomethane. And underneath, I've just given you a sample of some of the bonds and their wave numbers. So in the exam, if they were to give you a question around this, then you'd have your little graph and then you'd have a table with the wave numbers of a range of different bonds. So what you need to do is look and see where those peaks are. So we can see that there's a peak round about 3000. And then if we have a look at our table, we can see that the wave number between 2850 and 3300 corresponds to a carbon hydrogen bond. So within that chemical, we've got carbon hydrogen bonds. And then if you look further along, we've got another peak round about a thousand, and that corresponds to our carbon-carbon bond. So from the information that we get there, we can work out the types of bond that we have present within our molecule. And when you pair that up with the results of a mass spec, you actually know your relative formula mass. So you know the total mass of all of the atoms that make it up. And then you can apply those two things together to actually work out the structure of the chemical, even if you don't have a clue what it is. Hopefully at the end of this revision video, you can now describe the advantages of using scientific instruments to analyze substances, and you can also interpret results from different instrumental analysis methods.